Hello and welcome to day two of Via Doloroso, also known as the Way of the Cross. Station two presents when Jesus receives the physical cross. Our text today comes from John chapter 19, verses 16 through 17. Read with me. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Now let's talk about crosses and where they originate. Jesus receives this cross at the palace of the Roman governor, which at that time was Pilate, but many crosses are from heaven. I'm saying many crosses are from heaven. In, in other words, we were born with them. They came with us. They were with us when we arrived here on earth or they were cast upon us. And although this station and this moment is about Jesus receiving the physical cross that he would later be crucified on, I want to suggest that before Jesus ever touched that physical cross, he had already begun carrying a living cross and the physical cross was simply a culmination of the living cross and his ultimate kingdom purpose. In verse 10, when Jesus was conversing with Pilate, Pilate said to him, don't you realize that I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Pilate, like Satan, was confused in thinking that somehow he wielded power over God's plan for our lives. But John 10 and 18 records Jesus saying, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. So some crosses we are just born with. Like Jesus, we all come here with living crosses. Of course, our greatest cross was given to us by God. It is our call to love God and to love others without, a, without holding any debt over the ones that we love. But there are other living crosses that we carry simultaneously. Some of them we have in common, some of them we don't. Someone perhaps is in a financial conundrum, born into poverty and trying to figure out how to break free from it. Still someone else might be dealing with genetic health issues. Not, nothing that was of your own doing, you were simply born with some type of DNA or genetic defect. Others may be born into a spiritually dysfunctional family and you're trying to figure out how to love them out of this. The list goes on and on. But then sometimes along life's journey, we just pick up some crosses along the way. Maybe there are health issues that you're experiencing and you weren't born with them, but you kept ignoring the rules of how to take care of the temple that God gave you. And in doing such, you have picked up a cross. Perhaps uh, someone did not know that we needed to be in right relationship with Jesus Christ or you knew and you spiritually rebelled and it has caused a dysfunction in your family. You have picked up a cross along the way. And then finally, maybe someone's financial cross um, was not because they were born in, uh, into poverty, but maybe you did everything right. Maybe you did tithe your 10% or more. Maybe you did do with the other 90% that God told you. Maybe you obeyed God in everything. And then perhaps, perhaps uh, life changes just took place and you have found yourself in a financial conundrum. It just handed you that cross. Well, from the time, actually before Jesus was born, Satan tried to destroy him. But even after he was born, he spent all of Jesus's life trying to either destroy him or to thwart the cross that Jesus carried, trying to keep him from fulfilling that. And just like Jesus, he does the same thing to us. I want to, to um, encourage you and give you some pointers from Jesus himself that he used to help him as he was carrying that living cross that ultimately led to the physical cross that we're talking about in station two. Let's take a look at Matthew 36 and 42. It reads like this. He went away again a second time and prayed saying, my father, if this cup cannot pass away unless I drink from it, your will be done. Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane before he was taken by Roman soldiers, having this conversation, this very tough conversation, might, I might add, with, with God. But he was able to offer his flesh up to die so that he could raise up with power and so that he could raise up so that we could live through him 
for four different reasons here. First, he accepted and owned his cross. He said, if, if this is what you want me to do, this is the way it has to be, then I'll do it. Number two, he leaned into God's authority. He said, Father, your will be done. Father, your will be done. Number three, he spent time with God, keeping his focus on God, God's word, God's will, God's way, instead of focusing on himself. And then finally, number four, he had a circle of like-spirited people, people who were also willing to submit to God's authority, people who were also willing to carry the cross for God so that it is God's will that would be done and not their own will. Let's go ahead and end our time today in prayer. Father, thank you so much for the cross. Thank you for this word. Thank you for what Jesus did so that we can live and so that we would know how to live. Romans 10 and 9 tells us that if you declare with your mouth or if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Well, we do believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sin and that you have made him Lord and that you raised him from the dead. And we thank you for that. We lift up every cross that we have to carry during our physical time here on earth until ultimately our time here is over and we spend eternity with you. And we ask you to help us keep focused on you. We ask you to help us to hear you and give us spiritual eyes, uh, increase our spiritual eye strength so that we can see you and we can give ourselves over freely so that our flesh is crucified and so that your ultimate will is done. We thank you for your kingdom. We thank you for your work. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.